now that the 10 episodes have aired and I had a chance to talk to you and Harp and Bill Cartwright and Craig Hodges and so many others that we've talked to, do you look back on it and were you, did you enjoy it? Did you feel like nah, it was okay? How would you answer that? I would say, you know, um, entertaining, but, you know, we know – who, who was there um, as teammates that uh, about 90% of it was, uh, I don't know if I can say it on air, but BS. Right. Um, uh, in terms of um, the, the, the realness of it, um, um, you know, as I stated uh, the other day, <clears throat> um, that it, was, it wasn't real. Uh, because uh, a lot of things that he said to uh, some of his teammates, that um, his teammates went back at him, but all of that was kind of edited out of uh, the documentary, if you want to call it a documentary. Yeah, it was funny. Ron Harper said to you and I, hey, man, he he called me one of those names, and I went right back at him, and I know it's on tape, and they never showed it. He only picked on three guys that he felt he could dominate. Is that a fair way to look at it? Well, absolutely. I mean, he felt that he could dominate me, but that was sadly mistaken uh, because, you know, whenever he went at me, I went at him right back, you know. Uh, that was, but in terms of um, Will Perdue, uh, Steve Kerr, and uh, the young man, Scott Burrell, I mean, that was heartbreaking, you know, to, to, to see a guy, uh, a, a leader, to go at – those guys like that. I mean, that's, I mean, I understand in terms of practicing, you know, you get, you know, uh, you know, you have a push and shove there here and there, but outright punching and things of that nature and calling them uh, the B's and the H's, you know, um, that wasn't called for. So when you go back to draft night, 1987, and the story goes, and I was scouting in the league then that Jerry Cross is in love with Joe Wolf. Doug Collins is in love with Horace Grant, and most of Jerry's scouts, if not all, wanted Horace Grant. And take us to that moment because the Bulls are on the clock. You don't know where they're going, and you're sitting there going, am I going to Chicago or are they taking Joe Wolf?" I mean, it was one of the most nervous but most exciting nights of my life, you know, sitting there and not knowing where you're going to go. Um, my agent at the time was like, you know, uh, you know, uh, I think Chicago might uh, draft you. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, saying that, um, you know, I heard later in my career that uh, it came down to the last minute of uh, the Bulls being on the clock because uh, Jerry Krause was so in love with Joe Wolf. You know, uh, you know, Joe was a very, very good college player uh, coming out of North Carolina. You know a lot of history there, and uh, and uh, Doug Collins, Johnny Bach, and everybody in that room said, "Look, man, uh, we we want Horace Grant." But of course, Jerry Krause had other ideas. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Reinsdorf, Jerry Reinsdorf, call, went call Krause outside. And this is the story was told to me that he said, "Look, everybody in that room wants Horace Grant." If you make the, the decision with Joe Wolf, you're going to have to live with it. And I think that he was telling him, I'm not going to put words into Mr. Uh, and, into Jerry Randolph's mouth, but I'm I'm pretty sure he was saying, you you do this deal, it doesn't work out, then you know I think your your butt is going to be uh, your butt is going to be alive. And I say to this day, Jerry Cross was the GM, but Jerry Randolph drafted me that night. So along with along with uh, Bill Collins and Johnny Bach and the rest of the people in that room. So when did you know you're there? It's you. It's Scotty. You're both skinny. Now they hire Al Vermeil. That was like Jerry's second hire, Kraus. And I saw you at the multiplex at Deerfield working out and getting bigger. And you and Scotty all of a sudden are getting stronger. When did you know we can win championships? We've get, we, this team is ready to take the next step. Well, I, I think uh, after Detroit kept beating our heads in every year, even though we got stronger, stronger um, uh, physically, but we weren't there mentally um, as a team. Um, I think after that seventh game, we took them to seventh game, 
And, you know, I think John Paxson was hurt that uh, uh, that seven game. And, and of course, uh, uh, Pip had the, the migraines. I think after that game, even though we lost uh, that series, we felt that uh, we were going to be more mature the following year um, to get over that hump. After we beat Detroit and we won our first one, man, you know, I guess you can say the rest is history. Yeah, no question. So I've got to ask you, I asked you this yesterday. I want to give you this forum to answer it. Michael says, oh, yeah, Horace was the leak. He's the one that went to Sam Smith and gave him all that stuff for the Jordan rules. The floor is yours. How do you respond to that? Cap, as I I stated to everybody, that is a, a downright, outright, completely lie. Lie, lie, lie. And as I stated, if MJ had a grudge with me, let's say, like, man, let's talk about it, or we can settle, settle it another way. But yet and still, he goes out and put this lie out that I was the source behind. Sam and I have always been great friends. We're still great friends. But the sanctity of that locker room, I would never put anything personal out there. The, the mere fact that Sam Smith uh, was an investigative reporter, that he had to have two sources, two, to, uh, to, to write a book, I guess. Why would MJ just point me out? Okay? Right. That's, I mean, that, it, it, it's only a grudge, man. I'm telling you, it was only a grudge. And I think he proved that during this so-called documentary when – if you don't say something, if you say something about him, he's going to cut you off. He's, uh, um, he's going to try to destroy your character. I mean, you know, Charles Barkley, they've been friends for over 20, 30 years, and he said something about uh, Michael's um, uh, management uh, with the Charlotte Bobcats or the Charlotte Hornets. Um, and then they haven't spoken since then. And my, my fact, is, my, my point is that he called, he said, I was a snitch. But yet and still, after 30 or 35 years, he brings up um, his rookie year going into uh, one of his teammates' room, his former teammates' room, and saying coke and weed and women. My point is, why, why in the hell did he want to bring that up? What, what's that got to do with anything? I mean, if, if you want to call somebody a snitch, that's a damn snitch right there. So, and we're talking with the great Horace Grant here on ESPN 1000 on Kappa Company. The, there's also a story, it was in USA Today, I mean, it's been everywhere, where it said, yeah, if Horace didn't play well, Michael would tell the flight attendant not to give him his dinner. <laughs> Again, I give you the floor. Oh, uh, Cap, come on. I mean, I, I mean, anybody knows me as a rookie that if anybody, I mean, comes up and try to, snatch my food away. I'm going to do my best to beat their ass. <laughs> and believe me, back then I could have took MJ in a heartbeat. Yes, yes, it's true that he told the flight attendant, well, don't give him anything because he played like crap. And I went right back at it. I said some, some, some choice words that I, I won't repeat on here, but I said some choice words and stood up. If you want it, you come and get it. And, of course, you know, he didn't move. He was just barking. But that was, that was the story. But anybody knows me, where I come from and what I stand for, come on, man. Ain't no, there's nobody in this earth will ever come and try to take food off my plate and not get their rear end beaten. You were very, very close to Johnny Bach. And Johnny, before he passed, he and I used to go to lunch, and he would tell me, you asked Horace Grant about what it was like being part of what we called the Dobermans and using military terms, x-ray and yoke for defense. What do you remember about that commitment to defense by that team? Cap, man, it was one of the, the most exciting uh, defensive teams I ever played on in, in terms of um, us being athletic and trusting each other out there um, as teammates. I knew that MJ or Pip, uh, and they, they gambled all the time in terms of going for steals and things of that nature. And they know they, they knew 
if their um, their guy got past them, I would be there to get their backs. And they knew that. And I'm pretty sure uh, uh, that was one of the reasons why they were uh, so so great on the defensive end. And I knew if I had their backs and and something happened that my man or their man got past me, I knew I had Bill Cartwright. Bill Cartwright back there to knock somebody down who came into that lane. So it was all a, uh, a, a great team uh, uh, defensive uh, moments. When was the last time you spoke to Michael? And if you saw him, would you have a conversation with him or no, nah, I'm past that? Um, gosh, I talked to MJ. We text ooh, about, I want to say about three years ago, three, about three years ago, we were talking about uh, golf. And, uh, um, you know, the, the crazy thing, Cap, is that um, for one of my, one of my uh, uh, charities, um, he sent me an a autographed uh, pair of shoes. You know, I don't understand that if he had some, some difference with me, um, he could have texted me, he could have called me the whole nine yards. Um, but if I, had, if I see him today, you know, we will hopefully pay our respects to each other because we went through, um, you know, three championships together. But if not, you know, believe me, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Do you think when Scotty left, do you think he would have stayed after 98 if the Bulls wanted him to, if they had decided to keep that thing together? Listen, there is no way that Pip would have stayed there another year uh, um not because he didn't love the Bulls, but because of the contract. Uh uh-uh. uh. I think if 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 MJ had to defer some of that money, maybe a Pip would have stayed there. But you know, Pip had the the back injury, the foot injury, things of that nature. He wanted to uh secure his uh the financial uh, uh future. And I'm pretty sure I'm ninety nine point nine 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 percent that uh uh, Pitt would have uh, gone uh, gone other places. Did you feel Scotty was portrayed unfairly in the documentary? I have never seen uh, quote unquote a number two guy as as, as decorated as, as Scotty Pippen uh, portrayed so badly in terms of um, the migraine. Um, in terms of uh, the 1.6 or 7 second um, uh, selfish, I, I have never seen this uh, in all of my life. In the respect of Pip was out there, I think in game six, could barely walk, uh, getting knocked down on his back, trying, trying to do whatever he, he could to help that team. Um, and my, my, my point is, why was that 1.6 or 7 seconds in the documentary, so-called documentary, uh, about Pip? I mean, MJ wasn't even on the team. Right. Why was that in there? I mean, that, we handled that, that year very well as a team. Uh, Pip know that he, he was wrong for doing it. But yet and still, uh, uh, we went after the game. Bill stood up, said we had to say, Bill Cartwright. And then we handled it. It was over. It was over. We go on um, to take the Knicks to uh, seven games. So, I mean, it was over. Why bring that up? That's, that's my question to everybody out there who's listening. It's a, and it's a, a very valid question. Bill Cartwright said to you and I yesterday uh, when we were doing that thing for Bet Online, and Bill said, yeah, our leader left and walked out on us to go play baseball. Did that? Re- did some guys resent it? Because it certainly sounded like Bill did, and Bill's as classy a guy as there is. Well, I didn't, I mean, I didn't pay attention to it, to be honest. Um it was his decision to go play baseball. Go play baseball. I mean, I, I, I mean, I didn't give a damn. It, it opened the doors up for 
everybody who remained on that team to step forward to show um, the world and show ourselves and the fans of Chicago what we are made of in terms of um, not just being the Jordanaires. And <clears throat> Scotty Pippen led us that year. Um, he was in the M- MVP voting. I mean, he had just a terrific season. And it was my first and only, and I think B.J. Allstrom, first and only NBA All-Star uh, um, team that year. Uh, we won 55 games that year. Um uh, without the the great uh, number twenty three. Hey, as I let you go, you you said, and I laughed. You said it's a so called documentary. Why do you say that? When 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 that uh, so called documentary is, is about one person basically, and he has the 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 last word on what's going to be put out there. What's going to be put out there? It's not a documentary. It's his narrative of what uh, happened in the last quote unquote dance. That's not a documentary because a whole bunch of things was, was cut out, edited out. So that's, that's why I call it a so called documentary. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN. Plus.